our series po, ang title po ng series natin is Joy to Your World. At alam naman natin ngayon, uso na yung mga caroling and yung refrain na Joy to the World, naririnig natin yan sa mga bata. But maybe some of us cannot relate personally dun sa song na yun because for one reason or the other, we do not feel joy sa puso natin. And uh, we're looking at uh, four possible reasons bakit minsan wala tayong joy in our hearts. There could be regrets, there could be losses, brokenness, or frustrations. Iniisa-isa po natin ito, titignan natin bawat isa, in the hope that by God's grace, bagamat mabigat yung damdamin ng ilan sa atin as we enter into this season, by God's grace din, nawa makapasok yung mensahe ng Pasko sa puso natin. A message that gives us hope, that gives us a sense of uh, Joy na totoo, na hindi lang basta pinipilit natin. It's something that really comes from the Lord. The real joy that comes from the Lord. Last Sunday, we started off yung ating usapin by talking about regrets. O yung mga pagkakamali natin. The things that we have done in the past. Mga bulilyaso and all, all those things, you know. Things that makes us feel like a failure or guilty tayo. And as we come into this uh, time of the year, uh, Pasko, uh, some of us have that in our in our hearts, in our, on our shoulders, naisip natin, ba't ba natin ginawa yung mga yun? So, it's hard for us to rejoice kapag yung guilt is so heavy sa puso natin, especially at this time. You know, we are reminded once again na yes, Jesus uh, is, is born, you know, sila celebrate natin yung birth ni Christ, but we are also reminded do sa mga pagkakamali natin. So, I gave you this message last Sunday na only Jesus can determine your future, not your failures okay and all of us have our failures so today we're going to talk about the next thing na minsan nagiging dahilan why it's so hard for people to rejoice and th- that has to do with losses okay and let me say natin ng losses now of course the most obvious kind of loss would be the loss of a loved one maybe this year somebody very close to you somebody na malapit sa you you know uh, you have lost a loved one and that maybe is the reason why it's hard for you to celebrate itong pagpasok natin ng Pasko. Because you're reminded. You're reminded of this person. You're reminded of his smiles. You're reminded of his presence. Reminded ka nung siya'y kasama mo pa. And so it's so hard when everybody else is celebrating parang kayo, ikaw, or maybe the people who know this person, mabigat ang inyong kalooban. So losses can be one of those reasons why it's so hard to celebrate, kahit na sinasabi ng mga tao, let's rejoice, let's rejoice. It's hard for you to rejoice when somebody important to you has been lost. Now, hindi lang naman yan ang posibleng maaaring maging lost natin sa buhay, but anything na important or anyone na important. Some of you maaaring hindi naman kayo makarelate dun sa namatay, maybe nobody really died this year na malapit sa inyo, but in a sense, someone na, na importante sa iyo is no longer there in your life, you know? Maybe there was a loved one na ngayon hindi mo na siya loved one. Okay? Siya na ngayon ay wala na. Okay? Pag nakikita mo sa Facebook yung picture niya at iba na kasama niya, iba na ka-holding hands niya, hindi ka maka-celebrate. Gusto mo sirain yung picture. Gusto mo sirain yung cellphone. Okay? Because you are reminded of, of love that was lost. Okay? Sa mga dito, nalulukot kayo because, you know, maybe prior to December, may bago ka cellphone, but ngayon pagpasok ng December, wala ka ng cellphone. Okay? And you're grieving, okay? And you're sad, okay? Or maybe it's a job that you've lost, okay? Somebody, something na dati gusto-gusto mong ginagawa, but it's not there anymore. Or maybe you have lost a ministry na dati ikaw ang nandoon, but now somebody else is doing it. It could be any kind of loss, and there, there are a couple of things that kailangan natin isipin about losses, you know. Sometimes it's just the, the idea na maaaring ma-loss um, something or someone, okay? In other words, maybe may sakit siya, maybe mo lubha, and you're thinking na maybe I would lose this person. Or maybe it's something na parang, you know, na parang pa, nababalita sa'yo na mawawala. Maybe it's a job and you heard na there will be terminations, you know, in the coming weeks or months and you just feel, and you just imagine na ikaw yung kasama dun sa listahan na yun. But just thinking na posibleng magkaroon ng loss can have such a deep impact sa puso mo. And then of course, yung actual loss. Kapag nandiyan na, then it affects all of us, right? 
Pag mayroong mga loss na ganyan, it's so hard na tayo ay magdiwang, mag-rejoice while everybody is jumping up and down. Ikaw, feeling mo parang kung ikaw ay mag-jump up and down, parang plastic and that thing. Or parang you're not being true to yourself. So today, I believe itong message na to is for all of us nakaranas ng loss one way or the other. Either actual loss yan or perceived loss, parang parating pala. It could be a person, it could be something, it could be anything, okay? Basta na-experience natin yung loss. This is a message for all of us. Now, we're going to talk about the most extreme kind of loss found in the Bible, and that is, of course, death, okay? The death of Lazarus. Yun ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon. Now, this is quite challenging. Uh, first of all, kasi it's a bit uh, long passage, uh, 11 verse 1 to 44, so you have to bear with me. Medyo challenging to, and I'm sure medyo, you know, magsasenyas na sa akin dito yung text na Tama na, Pastor, tapusin mo na yan, you know, mukuba ka na. And I hope I can finish it in time. Okay, pag-pray niyo ako. Amen? I hope we can do that. But it's also uh, challenging in a sense because uh, even though uh, uh, hindi naman totoo sa lahat sa atin dito na naka-experience tayo ng death in the family or death somebody close sa atin. Just recently, I found out mayroong dating itaga Aral CC na namatay. So it may not be somebody like that na parang nawala sa atin. But still, yung death of Lazarus, yung story na ito, can minister to all of us kahit ano pa yung loss na na either perceive mo o nangyari na sa buhay mo. Because death actually is the ultimate, di ba? Sabi nga, may kanta si Zeb kanina, uh, yun ang umaga, na ang kanta niya is tungkol doon sa merong dulo daw. Okay, may dulo. Lahat daw ng bagay, may dulo. Hindi niya kinanta ngayon yun. Si Pastora Maripi ang kumanta ngayon. Hindi naman tungkol sa dulo, pero parang nasa dulo rin siya. Kasi nakupo siya, right? So, but anyway, may, may kataraw na may dulo. Well, yeah, nakakalukot mga sabihin nito. Minsan, yung mga bagay na masaya, maganda, and everything, um, you know, may dulo. Ang alam ko lang, walang dulo ay yung traffic sa EDSA. Palagay ko walang dulo yun, okay? It's just uh, forever, right? Um, now, okay, so, yeah, we're gonna talk about the death of Lazarus. Now, th- what is interesting about this uh, passage, po, to tell you honestly, is that it may surprise you na hindi naman talaga tungkol kay Lazarus itong story na to. Amazingly, okay? Uh, because in the first place, you know, we are told na namatay siya and then he doesn't even talk or anything. Wala, a-appear lang siya sa dulo ng story. Ah. Medyo na-rise ano na, 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 again na, you know? So it's not really even about him, okay? But it's about all the people surrounding him and, and more than that, there is something else na I believe John is trying to communicate dito sa chapter na to. And for those of you na hindi po siya doon maalam sa Bible study methods, this will be a learning uh, experience for all of you paano nag-aaral ng mga narratives, okay? O mga storya sa Bible. Let me just show you, uh, you know, three things that shows us na hindi lang yung what it seems. Hindi lang tutukol kay Lazarus. First of all, sa so verse 2 ng chapter na ito, it says, This Mary, nakalagay sa parenthesis, nilagay ng translators in parenthesis because they feel like parang it's a bit, a bit weird na hindi niya. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Okay, so that, that's in verse 2. So in verse 1, we are told that si Lazarus na matay. And then in verse 2, we are told about this information, which kung nagbabasa kayo ng Bible, you may not see, you may not think about it. So, and you just move on. But actually, it's significant because yung sinasabi sa verse 2 is something na mangyayari pala si chapter 12. Are you listening? In other words, if you're reading John, so let's know, chapter 1, 2, 3, ganyan, ganyan, wala yung story na sinasabi niya na it will appear chapter 12. Which is interesting because bakit binabanggit ni John right at verse 2 no, na mayroong mangyayari na sa chapter 12 pa niya babanggitin. Because he wants the readers to understand na itong story na to about Lazarus does not stand on its own. It's really part of something big. Are you listening? Okay, so may natutunan ba kayo sa Bible study, right? So it's a very, very casual information. Sinasabi ka ngayon ng information na itong si Mary daw, kasi marami Mary nung araw, iba ba, meron din akong nanay na Mary, you know, Mary Bodonia. So marami Mary, okay? But sabi ni, sabi ni John, itong Mary na to, just for you to understand, ito yung Mary na nag, basically nagbasag nung, ano, nung uh, alabaster jar and perfume pala, and then ito yung binuhos sa paa ni Jesus, which later palang malalaman ng mga readers is chapter 12, okay? So which means, Chapter 12 is really part of the story. Now, we cannot go to chapter 12, obviously, kasi mahaba masyado. But just to give you an idea, chapter 12, like all the chapters from chapter 1 hanggang chapter 12, is all about the dilemma na nafi-face ng mga tao whenever they are confronted about the identity of Jesus. 
It's always a dilemma of either will I believe or not believe? Will I believe or not believe? So every every chapter was like parang a struggle, you know, sa puso ng mga tao who were seeing or witnessing yung mga ginagawa ni Jesus. And all the things that ginagawa ni Jesus, sabi nga ni, ni John din later on, si chapter 20, sabi niya, there are many things that ginawa ni Jesus, but these things, itong signs na ginawa niya, these are intended to help you believe that He is the Son of God. So in other words, yung buong, ano na yun, buong story na yun, mula chapter 1, mula chapter 2 pala rather, hanggang chapter 2, lahat yan ay parang confrontational stories telling the readers, would you believe or not believe? Now for those of you na ninyo alam po ano yung Gospel of John, sa chapter 13 all the way to chapter 17, yun yung special part ng Gospel kung saan talagang kinakausap niya yung mga disciples niya to prepare them for, for his death. So if you're reading it, chapter 13, yung nasa the Lord's Supper sila, first nagugas sila ng paa, you know, and, and all the way hanggang chapter 17, kung saan si Jesus prayed, lahat yun were all parang special seminar ni Jesus sa mga disciples niya. 18 and 19, okay, yan yung pinaka-crucifixion ni Jesus, John 18 and 19. So, buhay na natin. Chapter 20 is yung resurrection ni Jesus. Chapter 21 ay yung reinstalling ni Peter. Woo! Okay, so yun ang buong chapter. Yung buong buong buong, 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 okay? You got that? Amen? Okay, ulit natin. So, yung chapter, okay, right, so yun yun, basically, alright? So, I just want you to understand that. Now, second second thing that, that makes us suspect na medyo chapter 11 is more than what it seems, when he heard this, okay, Jesus said, now, it's not clear whether Jesus said this to his disciples. I think he did not. Kasi yung information would have slanted the whole conversation, okay? Kasi kung sinabi niya sa mga disciples niya, parang, ah, okay. So yung mga responses nila dapat hindi na naging galon, okay? But I think he just said it to himself, or probably most likely, he just thought about it. Sabi, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, yung keyword na yun na glorified is actually a tip sa mga nagbabasa na itong story na to is really not isolated. This is part of the, the signs that are being narrated throughout the gospel. Unang-una yung transformation ng tubig into wine. You remember that? So, wedding in Cana. Anybody here? Nabasa nyo na yun? Some of you are saying, ah, oh, meron ba gano'n? Yeah, you know, yung water, ginawang wine, okay? And there was the, the second sign was the healing of the official son. Na sabi ng official, eh, pagkaligay mo naman yung anak ko. Sabi ni Jesus, sure, butang uwi ka na. You know? the, so long distance healing ito, that was the second sign. Uh, the third sign was the, the healing of the, ano, the, uh, yung invalido, yung the invalid, yung ano siya, hindi siya makalakad for 38 years. At sabi ni Jesus, gusto mo lumakad? Sabi ni, oh, walang magtutulak sa akin. O, tumayo ko lalakad ka na. So lakad na siya. So that was the third sign. And the fourth sign, nandiyo pa kayo? Sumit ka tuwi mo. Okay, I'm just giving you this back. Para malaman nyo na this one is important. The fourth side was the, uh, okay, let me see, let me see. Ooh. The fourth side was the feeding of the 5,000. Okay, 5,000, pinakain niya. That was the fourth side. And by the way, pag binasa nyo lahat yun, lagi may sinasabi, sign, 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 sign. Okay, so lahat ng mga story yun may sign. Okay, tapos yung, yung panlima, okay, ang panlima is the, uh, the, the healing of the man born blind. Okay, Pinanganak ng bulag, okay? And si Jesus, pinagaling niya itong taong ito. And people were so, parang amazed. Parang, di ba yan yung naglilimos bulag niya? Ba't ngayon nakakita na? So there was this whole controversy. It was a sign. Yun yung pang-anin. Pang, ay, panlima pala. Yung pang-anin is this story. Are you listening? This is pang-anin. Ang pampito is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the final sign. Okay? All of these signs is confronting people, yung mga readers, at tayo ngayon, to whether decide tayo whether to believe or not believe in Jesus. So, this story, yung Lazarus story, is more than what it seems. It's really a confrontation sa atin to believe in Jesus with all of our hearts. Okay, so, whew, let me move on. The last one, okay. Jesus answered, um, Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they uh, see... Uh, by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. Okay, kayo. The concept of light starts in chapter 1. Jesus is the light. Okay, tuloy-tuloy yan. Bawat chapter, bawat ano pa ulit Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? In other words, ibig sabihin, we are living in a dark world. In fact, si Judas, nung binetrain niya si Jesus, sabi sa Bible, he went out and it was night. Okay, so night symbolizes darkness, unbelief, people na hindi kilala kung ano talaga katotohanan. And so this story is about Jesus being the light. <sighs> okay, so this story is more than about Lazarus. It's about the struggles of faith in the face of death or loss. 
no, the struggles of faith in the face of death or loss. Now, there are three characters dito. The disciples, Martha and Mary, tapos the Jews who actually mourn with Martha and Mary. So, all of them exemplified o pinakita nila sa atin a very common pattern sa lahat ng mga humaharap sa death or nakaka-imagine ng death, no? maaaring death nila o death ng somebody, or loss. People who are going through any kind of parang loss sa buhay nila, whether hindi pa aktual o aktual na. They go through these four struggles of faith. Are you ready? Okay? We're going to talk about the four struggles of faith. The first one is the struggle of fear. Sabihin nyo nga po, fear. Okay? The struggles of fear. Now, the disciples, interestingly, showed sa atin dito in this story that they really struggled with this. Now, look at this verse. Okay? Now, Jesus loved uh, Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So, in other words, this story is really about a special group of people na malapit sa puso ni Jesus. Are you with me? These are not people na parang kaaway niya. Okay? Chapter 10, kaaway niya. Chapter 12, kaaway niya. But chapter 11, loves niya. Okay? They are in a relationship. Okay? At hindi complicated yung relationship nila. They are in a relationship. So, Jesus loved these people. Okay? Martha, sister niya, saka si Lazarus. So, when he heard, nabalitaan ni Jesus, that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Now, this is interesting information para sa atin. In na agad-agad tumayo si Jesus para bumisita sa kanyang mahal na si Lazarus, he stayed two more days. In fact, the, as you count the days, by the time na makarating si Jesus doon sa, sa lugar na kung nilalagyan ni Mary and Martha and of course si Lazarus na matay na by then, it took him four days actually. So four days, hindi dumarating si Jesus. So okay, two days muna, nagpahinga siya bago siya maglumakad. Mag- Ibig sabihin, two days pa yung lakad. Na okay, you know, just on the side, pag dumating yung araw na it takes two days to go to Quezon City, I will change a country. You know, hindi na ako rin sa Pilipinas. Okay. But anyway, two days daw, maglakad na lang. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. So sabi ni Jesus, okay, let us go back to Judea. The reason why sabi ko kanina, why I think hindi sinabi ni Jesus sa mga disciples niya that this will not end in death, is tinan yung reaction ng mga disciples. Look at verse 8. But Rabbi, okay, Rabbi means teacher. But Rabbi, they said, I showed a while ago the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you are going back. Now, for those of you na hindi pa kinibabasa masyado ng Bible, if you read the book of chapter 10, muntik na silang mamatay doon. Okay? And that is actually not exaggerating kasi yung mga tao were really, really, really upset. Kasi Jesus was walking around and saying, Oh, by the way, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And you know, I and the Father are one. You know, that's a nice way to talk sa harapan ng mga Jews. Okay? So sa harapan ng mga Jews, nga pala, pag nakita niyo ako, I'm God. Hi! You know, so yung mga Jews were all talagang infuriated. Gusto na silang patayin. You know, it's a good thing na nakatakas sila doon. So they were able to get out of that place bago sila batuhin. And, and you know, yung mga tao nung araw, just for you to have an idea kung gaano ka ruthless ang, ang stoning to death, hinahagis ka sa parang cliff. At pag laglag mo daw, pag nakita na naghihingalo ka, isa-isa sila maglalagay ng mga bato. Hindi sobrang, hindi maliliit na bato na toing, hindi ganun. Malalaking bato, hinahagis sila sa'yo. Tapos isa-isa lang, hindi sabay-sabay. To, titignan mo na lang kung efekto. <laughs> Hmm, ako sa pangalawa, dog, dog. So, ililibing ka sa bato. Very nice, okay? So, you like that? Okay? So, anyway, wala nang react sa inyo. Okay, so, they, they, they were afraid na babalik sila doon. Now, the reason na masabi ko afraid sila, because look at the statement ni Thomas. Kailangan niyo si Thomas? Okay? Sabi ni Thomas sa uh, verse uh, uh, 16, okay? Also known as Didymus, okay? Very important yun. Said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. They knew, they knew. It was a death sentence. Kung babalik sila doon, sa kinilalagyan nila Martha and Mary, and ano, mamamatay sila. So, si, si Thomas, you know, sabi niya, sige, balik tayo doon para mamatay tayo kasama ni Jesus. And it looks very impressive, except for the fact na tawag sa kanya ay Didymus. Ang ibig sabihin ng Didymus ay doble. Doble. Doble kara. Okay? In other words, dalawa, kailangan nyo si Thomas, di, 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 di ba? Siya yung tao na nung sinabi, oh, nag-resurrect na si Jesus, ha? Hindi ako niniwala dyan. So, he's the guy. Eh, tawag sa kanya, doubting Thomas. Okay? Siya rin yung guy na nung sinabi ni Peter na, mangingisdaan na lang ako. Sabi ni Thomas, sama ako. You know, so he's the person who may look like an the outward appearance na parang committed siya, but he is not. You know, and that's why it's interesting that sagot ni Jesus sa kanila is exactly these words. Are there now 12 hours of daylight? You know, anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. Ibig sabihin, sabi ni Jesus, look, 
Kasama ninyo ako. I am the light of the world. Don't be afraid of death. Now, just personally, practically speaking, all of us dito can be afraid of death. Ilan sa inyo na subukan nyo na sumakay ng bus, papuntang Manila, tapos yung driver ng bus parang does not fear death. Ilan sa inyo? Okay. Diba? Yung ang tuloy ng bus, tapos yung kapit mo doon sa handle, diba? Namumuti na yung kamay mo, diba? <laughs> tapos pagbaba mo ng ayala, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus. Diba? Because we're all afraid of death. It could be just the thought of it, right? Naalala ko, first time na ako ay parang in-opera. Di, di parang, in-opera ako talaga. It was my first time, you know. And yung wife ko bilang milang medtech yan, you know, very common. Alam niyo mga nagtatrabaho sa medicine, di ba? Parang, Oh, no, operasyon, okay? Saka, besides, nang anak na siya, dalawang anak namin. So, di ba? Okay, so wala yan, di ba? So, ako naman, parang hindi ko pa nararanasan yun. Except for one time, okay, bata pa, during summer, pero matagal na yun. Okay, so, di bang story yun? But, you know, yung actually, yung opera ka, yung higa ka sa operating table, na yung magic ko na, sari-sari, di ba? Paano kung di na ako gumising? Paano kung yung injection sa akin, yung device, ano ba yan, yung, yung para huwag ka makaramdam ng pain? You know, yung, honestly, yan, yeah, honestly, Testing ko lang kung nakikinig kayo, di ba? So, anesthesia. So, na-imagine ko, paano kung, bawa, nagkukintuhan sila tungkol sa probinsyano, tapos nalibang siya, na, nasaksak niya doon sa ibang lukas, tapos naparali ito. I can imagine all kinds of things. Di ba? How many of you, pag kayo na, naliligo or nagbibihis, may narandaman kayo, para, uy, sakit ng ulo ko, may tumor ako. You know, how many of you know that it can just be so frightening thinking about these things? Amen? And so, Jesus said, Jesus said, listen carefully, dito sabi ni Jesus sa mga disciples niya, don't be afraid. I am the light of the world. If you are walking with me, you are walking in the light. Amen? Na sa mundo kinagagalawan natin, there are so many unfair and unjust things. Di ba? Pag nakakita ka ng mga bata, nagkakaroon ng nagkasakit, o isang bungsa sakyan, nandun lahat yung buong pamilya, din aksidente. The world that we live in is so threatening. We're so afraid of what can happen to us and what can happen to our loved ones. Mga magulang, medyo wala pa yung mga anak nila. Asa ka na? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Di ba? Tapos pagdating ng anak, Oh, ba't hindi ka nag-text? Eh, wala akong load eh. Hindi pwede yun. Eh, bigyan mo ako pang load. Oh, sige, bayaan mo na kahit hindi ka mag-text. So, anyway, ang point lang natin dito is that we're all afraid of losing our lives and lose other people's lives. Amen? Kaya sabi ni Jesus sa ating ganito, Look, trust in me. I am the light of the world. Amen? Are you, are you here? Those of you who are afraid, natatakot kayo, and I can understand why you're afraid. Everybody's afraid. Diba? Plastic lang tayo pag sinabi, oh, nga pala, tatlong, tatlong linggo na lang ang buhay mo. Ah, talaga? Hallelujah! You know? So, plastic, I don't think it's totoo yan. Diba? But all of us are afraid just thinking about our mortality. Okay? Just think about our loved ones. Diba? Kaya nga minsan, yung, si PG, pag nagbibiro-biro yung sa bahay, sa bahay namin, sabihin niya, oh, pag wala na ako, ay tugtugtugin nyo, ako yung mga anak, parang gani! You know, because they cannot just imagine, you know, a loved one, if you're here today, at buhay pa yung loved ones nyo, maybe hindi nyo lang iniisip ito, but you're just, you know, afraid of losing them. Right? And that's why the second one makes sense in the case of the disciples. Kasi there was a struggle of denial. There was a struggle of denial on the part of the disciples. Look at this. Kaya yung verse na to. Sabi, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, sabi ni Jesus, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to wake him up. Now, again, this is the reason why sabi ko, malamang hindi sinabi ni Jesus sa mga disciples kung ano yung mangyayari. Because they were not responding in the way, in the way that, you know, kung alam naman nila kung ano yung mangyayari, dapat ang response nila was, yeah, narinig namin sa iyo yan. Eh. But instead, ito ang nangyayari sa look at sa, sa susunod na talata. Okay, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Okay? In other words, they do not want to face even the idea na ma- itong friend nila, si Lazarus, and I think friend din nila to, okay, is going to die or has in fact died already by this time. Okay? Hindi na naman tanggap yun. Sabi nila, siguro natutulog lang siya in, you know, gigising din siya, right? And then sabi ni Susunod na talata, Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then, he, got, he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. In other words, sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, patay na siya, so wag na kayo mag-deny, deny dyan. You know, one of the things that is very interesting sa atin when we are faced with loss or possibility of loss or pag may sakit or whatever, we tend to just deny those things. And it's hard for us to accept it, no? 
Uh, lalo na pag medyo mal, ano, parang masyadong abrupt o bigla. Like, I have this friend of mine, ako kung nakwento ko na before ito sa mga preaching ko, but I had a friend of mine, very close na kami dalawa, and we both like martial arts. So every day gumigising kami, nag-sparring kami, magkapitbahay lang kami, at ah, at ah, so nililiparap noong araw, kaya ko pang gawin yun. Ngayon, iniisip ko na lang. Pero nung araw, I, I could kick, you know, and marunong ako ng mga, you know, mga pabaliktad, marunong ako doon. Ngayon, hindi na. Iniisip ko na lang yun. Pero at that time, kaming dalawa, sparring partner ko yun. And he is a very muscular kind of person, malaki katawan, okay? And, uh, ano siya, yung, medyo maliit sa akin, pero, yeah. Anyway, maskulado siya, lagi siya nagbabarbell. Ako, hindi, ako nagbabarbell. Basta mahilig lang ako sa mga kung kung movies, okay? Anyway, itong friend ko na ito, umuwi, umuwi. Uh, galing, galing sa handaan, sa shakies, kasi nagkainan, nag-celebrate, birthday niya. Kainan sila, so umuwi siya. Pag uwi niya, sabi niya sa daddy niya, Dad, medyo nagugutom ako. So daddy niya, nandara ng pagkain. Kasi favorite siya na kanyang daddy. So pinakain pa lang siya kasi birthday nga niya. So kumain na siya. And then natulog na. Yun na yun. Natulog na, hindi na nagising. And so yung itong father niya was so shocked nung pag kinumaga. Sabi, oh anak, ising na, breakfast. Hindi na kumikilis yung friend ko. Patay na. And that was, the, that was a shock of his life. Hindi niya talaga matanggap yun. So, Fast forward tayo, nalibing na yung anak niya and everything. Pero whenever we would visit the house, kung ano yung itsura ng kwarto, when the, my friend died, yung pa rin ang itsura. So hindi niya inaayos yung mga kama, yung lamesa, kung saan doon nagsulat yung kanyang anak, hindi niya inaayos yun. And ito pa medyo spooky na kote, at that time hindi pa ako Christian. Every year, mag-celebrate ng birthday yung anak niya. At ini-invite kami lahat ng barkada, lahat ng friends ng anak niya. Punta kayo, birthday ng anak ko. And what is scary about it is that during the birthday party, lagi may silyang bakante. And he would always say, here is my son. He's very happy na nandito kayong lahat. So kami lahat para, ah, so we were just scared to death, okay? But he could not get over this death. And if you're here today, some of you may be struggling with this. Maybe there was a loss of a loved one. Maybe in the sense of parang namatay siya. And you cannot accept it. And you know, it's, it's understandable. But you've got to accept that things like that do happen sa mundong ito. Now, I'll speak to those of you na hindi naman namatayan. Instead, ang namatay sa inyo ay yung love life niyo. No? I'll, I'll just talk about that for a second. Kasi a lot of people, ano, yung mga young people, siyempre, believe ako sa inyo. Kasi when you love, you really love. Okay, right? Diba? Pag nag-love kayo, talagang loves you talaga. Kaya pag nawala naman yung love nyo, talagang devastated naman kayo. Yun naman ang problema. Because I see that in many young people, they cannot function anymore, diba? Talagang ano sila parang, o oh, ba't ka ganyan? Wala, pastor. Diba? Malayo ang tingin. Yan sa... Kasi di, ikaw, di ka makamove forward. Kasi di ba, di ba iniisip mo, dami mo in-invest sa tao na yan, di ba? Naalala nyo ba yun na namamasyal kayo, wala kayong pera sa luneta, you know, and, and, and you invested a lot, and talaga naman nagpangakuan pa kayo, nagpromise pa kayo sa isa't isa, ikaw na lang, wala nang iba. Ngayon, meron na siyang iba. And you just cannot move on. Hindi mo matanggap yung realidad na yun, okay? But one of the things that the Lord is saying to you right now this morning is that, Anak, look to me. Look to Jesus. It's not that person who can truly give you joy. It's the Lord. Now maybe binuhos mo lahat sa kanya. And that was the problem. Kaya siya nawala sa'yo because in-idolize in mo na yung tao. Right? Yung picture niya nandun sa lamesa mo, may kandila. You're bowing, you know. It's just, you know, you're not, you're not focused anymore. Sometimes it's a work, it's a job that God takes away from your life. Kasi yung work na yun, yun na yung kinaiikutan ng mundo mo. Sometimes it's something else ang mas mahalaga sa'yo and God removes it and you're devastated because God is teaching you focus on the Lord and not on that thing or not on that person or not on that experience. It is the Lord who is the light of the world. Si Jesus ang pag-asa mo, not that person. So, yung mga tao dyan na naging stock sa Facebook, mag-repent na kayo, okay? Alright, repent. Stop. Meron mga ilamas, pasto, na-let go ko na siya. O, oh, talaga? Bakit pag nakikita mo, nagingit-git ka sa galit? Di ba? Na-let go ko na siya. Pero pag nakita mo yung picture, parang dami-dami like, nakakainis. Ba't siya nila-like yan? Oh, come on. Let go. And let the Lord be the light of your life. Amen? Okay, let's move on. Third struggle is the struggle of anger. The struggle of anger, and this is interesting, 
Because at first, para you might not think na this would be a common, very common response natin whenever there is a threat of loss or there's an actual loss sa buhay natin. There's anger. Surely, okay? Tignan natin to. Let's read this story. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, now get this, huh? when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. Now, if you're reading it, the opinion in observe may higi, it was actually parang immediate and drastic na pagkarinig niya si Jesus was coming. Tumayo siya agad. Hey, just for you to know na hindi ganun ang normal kasi nakalang isusunod. But Mary stayed at home. In other words, Martha was so eager na to confront Jesus na nalaman niya na parating si Jesus. And remember, four days na lumipas. Alright? Sinabi niya na kay Jesus to, ano pa, earlier, may sakit ang kapatid ko. Si Jesus did not move, did not stand, or whatever. Two days pinalipas, tapos two days na nag-travel, four days ang tumagal, patay na si Lazarus. So, nung nasinabi na yun ng mga tao kay Martha, Martha parating na si Jesus. Saan? 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 You know, he just, she just stood up and walked straight. At tingnan niyo yung dialogue niya. Look at the, you know, one of the things uh, kailangan malaman niyo when you're doing Bible studies sa mga narratives, nasa dialogue yung meaning. Nasa dialogue. Lord, I mean, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And Lord, sabi ni Martha, Okay, hindi ka pa ano, absolto rito. Kung sakaling may pag-asa ka pa, you pray right now for my brother. <laughs> Dapat lang dito ka eh. I can relate to that. Kasi I remember years ago, nung namatay si, ano, si Brian, if those of you know, I si Brian. I was really angry, you know. I was angry this a hospital. I was angry this a I was angry even for ourselves, the church natin. Bakit hindi nung nakausap ko siya doon sa labas, sabi ko, Brian, kamusta ka na? Pa, eh, lagnat ako pastor eh. Sabi ko sa sarili ko nung namatay na siya, sabi, "Pa hindi ko, pa hindi ko sinabi na Brian, mag-check up ka na." Why was I so insensitive to Brian at that time, you know? Sinisisi ko yung sarili ko. And when, he, when I saw him in the hospital, sabi ko, bakit dito? Tapos, wala ako sabi pera eh. But wala tayong pera. I was blaming everything and everyone. And then we prayed. We really prayed. If you were here, kung, kailang, kung nandito kayo bagay kayo istorya niya, we really prayed, Lord, pag galingin niyo po si Brian. And he died. And I was angry. Kasi he was such a good man. But you can do one the Lord. And I don't know about you. Whenever someone special to you is taken away, hindi mo mas basta-basta para, o sige Lord, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Hindi, it's so hard for us to let go. Kaya nga siguro misa, may mga tao, di ba, pag namataya na sila, pag ililibing na, di ba, nagsisigaw sila doon, wag mo ako iiwan! Wag mo ako! Misa, kaya mag-witness ako ng ganyan eh, wag mo ako iiwan! Sama ako sa iyo! And I was there, gusto ko yung tulak, you know, but sana, sana, okay? But really, to be honest, it's really, you know, devastating, di ba? And, and she was, si Martha was really angry. Now, let's move on to the story para malaman nyo how angry she was. Jesus said to her, so sinabi ni Jesus sa kanya, your brother will, will rise again. Okay? Remember, alam na Jesus ko na magyari. So sabi niya kay, kay Martha, Martha, your brother will rise again. Notice niyo yung sagot ni Martha. <laughs> this is classic. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Tinuruan si Jesus ng theology. Alright? Para kung baga, sinabi na ni Jesus sa kanya, oh, your kapatid mo, he will rise again. Ah, yes, I know. You know, misa ng mga tao, because, you know, nahihirapan sila to process their own emotions. Pag may ganyan, may mga grief or whatever, nahihirapan silang tanggapin what is really going on inside their hearts. Minsan, they spiritualize things. Okay? Minsan, they spiritualize things. Instead of just accepting the reality, minsan, ginagamit pa nila yung scripture or theology kesa yung i-process nila yung nararamdaman nila deep down inside. Okay? Now, if I were you, you need to be very careful in this. Kasi minsan, lalo na, pag matagal na kayong mananampalataya. Di ba? O pag sinabi, uy, yung, ano, yung kapatid mo, yung magulang mo, nasa hospital, nasa ICU, mukhang delikado kalagayan. <laughs> God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Aha, you know, so you're, not, you're not accepting yung, yung reality minsan. And some people, pag hindi nila napoprocess yung kanilang anger inside, yung questions sila about God, minsan nagra-rise up yung later. Nagiging ano sila, parang bitter sila. They become bitter toward God. I know some people, who, because God did not answer their prayers the way they wanted it to be answered, they decided that Jesus is no longer worthy to be followed. Some of them have decided to backslide. You know, let me tell you something. They, right? Listen carefully. Sometimes when you pray, 
and God does not answer your prayer more the way you want it, you have to guard your heart because Satan will tempt you at that point and say, see, God does not care for you, but hindi niya sinagot yung prayer mo. But please understand, God is good. Amen? Pero yung goodness niya is not the same as your, your definition of goodness. Pag pumunta kayo sa, sa, sa clinic ni Dr. Aging, okay, at nagreklamo kayo ng ipin ninyo, gagawin niya, sasaksakan kayo ng, ano, ng, ng anesthesia, which is not very nice. Okay? Sasabihin niyo na, oh, anesthesia, hindi na pala anesthesia, pinupunasan na lang pala ng parang, iba na ngayon, advance na ngayon, di ba? Pinupunasan na lang ng parang, no? Tapos, bubunutin niya yung ipin mo na nireklamo mo, and habang binubunot niya yun, hindi mo masasabi, wow, this is so, re- I feel so good, you know? I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Hindi, at tingin mo kay Doktora, ging kaaway mo siya, she's the enemy. She's the, you know, kasi abang binubunod niya, parang, ah, 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 you know? As lalo na, pag hindi pa matanggal masyado, teka mo na, sandali lang, ha, 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 okay. And so, but, listen carefully, what Doktora Ging is doing for you is good. Pero yung definition mo of good is different from the definition ni Doktora Ging. For you, what is good is, kaganyan-ganyan ni Doktora Ging, o, oh, di ba, be if, punas-punasan natin yung mukha mo, yan, chubby-chubby, okay. No, that's good for you, but not really good. What I'm saying is this, God is good. Amen? And sometimes yung goodness niya does not come across atin as good. Pero still, God is good. Amen? So those of us who are questioning God and are angry at God, kasi bakit hindi niya ginawa ito, bakit hindi niya ginawa ito? Remember, God is good. God is able. God is faithful. Kahit hindi mo naiintindihan. Amen? Amen po ba? Kahit hindi mo naiintindihan. Alright. No. I won't, I won't, hindi pa ako tapos doon. Jesus said to her, okay, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, amazing. This is an amazing statement from Jesus. Okay? Sabi ni, look at the answer of Martha. Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Hello! Magkaiba ba kayo ng lingwahe? Sabi ni Jesus sa, sa kanya, ah, you know, the one who believes in me will live even though they die, okay? And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe in that statement? I believe that you are the Son of God, you are the Messiah. You're the... So that is not the point. And the reason why I'm saying that, because later on, talaga nag struggle si, si Martha ng kanyang unbelief. Because later on, mak- makikita natin yan. Jesus once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, okay? He said, but Lord, now listen, but Lord, si Martha to ha, si Martha nang sasabi, I believe in the resurrection, you know, I believe that you're the Messiah, okay? So sabi ni Jesus, okay, fine, take away the stone. Ano sagot ni Martha? But Lord, mabantot na, okay? The, 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 the sister of the dead, sabi, by this time there is a bad odor for he has been there four days. Aha, aha, are you listening? Diba? At first, parang theological siya, parang, I believe you're the Messiah. Mm-hmm. I believe you're the Son of God. Okay? So sabi ni Jesus, okay, fine. Remove the stone. Mabantot. <laughs> she really did not believe. That's why Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Some of us dito, tinotheologize natin yung faith natin. Some of us dito, ayaw natin harapin yung katotohanan na nagda-doubt tayo kay Lord. Some of us dito, ayaw natin tanggapin yung katotohanan na maybe we're not we're, we're questioning God's goodness. And one of the things that kailangan natin gawin is to face up to that reality and go to God. God, I'm doubting. God, I have questions. God, why? Bakit naman siya nagot yung prayer ko? Lord, bakit ganito nangyari? So, be honest. Come to God with all honesty so that you can be healed. Means I'm trying to pretend by spiritualizing it will not help you. Okay. Finally, is the struggle of sorrow. This will be the most common type of struggle na mga tao na go through ng loss. The struggle of sorrow. Let's read that. Okay? After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. Okay? Hindi naman sinabi talaga ni Jesus, send Mary to me. Pero pinangungunahan ni Martha si Jesus, you know, sabi, okay, she's asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. So, hindi pa siya umaalis doon. So, now, when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, uh, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. 
said, what do you expect, di ba? So, nung tumayo na si Mary, sabi na lika, sundan natin si Mary kasi nagdadalam natin siya, may naghihinag pa siya. So, alalayan natin siya, supporta natin siya, okay? Now, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, now notice this, she fell at, her, at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Exactly the same words, amen, as Martha, amen, except for the fact that she fell at his feet. She fell at his feet. In other words, she said that not in a very spiteful, angry manner. Hindi katulad ni Martha. Lord, dapat kung nandito ka, di mamatay kapatid ko. Si Mary said the same words, but kneeling down. She said it with full submission to God's will and purpose. Amen? That's why hindi siya ni-rebuke ni Jesus. No? Notice yun, the next words that come out. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Now listen carefully dito. Something that can give hope sa atin lahat dito. When you're going through any kind of suffering and pain, Jesus knows it. Are you with me? Jesus knows it. In fact, He shares your pain. In this particular text, in sa atin ng Bible that Jesus understood in a very deep way kung ano yung ginugoto nila Mary at nila Martha. And in fact, after that, sabi, where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Ito yung pinaka-shortest verse in the Bible, yet very powerful verse. Jesus wept. <laughs> You see, he, he doesn't have to weep. Jesus could have said, Kaya magalala, I know the ending of the story. Napanood ko na ito eh. <laughs> may preview ito, alam niyo, di ba? Pag nanood kayo ng pelikano, may leon, di ba? Napanood ko na yan. Wala, alam ko na yan eh. Okay? It's like he knew this story already. And yet, to tell us how he's so concerned para sa atin, he wept. And this is not a pretentious wept, weeping. This is a real weeping. So just to encourage all of you dito, how many of you dito, Misa, pag na, naiisip mo yung taong na wala na sa buhay mo, or maybe it's a love life or anything, or even just your cell phone, naiiyak ka. You know? Anybody here naiiyak kayo? Okay, listen. Don't ever, kasi Misa may mga tao, ganun eh. Ewan ko ba? Ayoko kasi umiiyak eh. Ayoko umiiyak. Umiiyak ka na kasi. Diba? Pag ganun yung mga tao, pag medyo nagsasalita, tapos, Ayan na, naiiyak na ako. Ayaw ko umiiyak. Ngek, toing. Umiiyak ka. Jesus wept. So yung tears are God's gift to you. So next time, pag naiiyak ka, amen, stop doing this. <laughs> stop doing it. Ano nga gawin mo? Ganun, no? Ano gawin mo? Because if you have tears, God knows and understands your tears. Amen? Alright, now, then Jesus said, see how he loved, uh, sorry, sorry, the disciples, the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, ito, unbelief nila, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? You see, may connection yun eh. May connection yun chapter 9. In other words, they were struggling in their faith. They could not believe. Kasi why? Bakit kasi hindi ginawa ni Jesus before nangyari ito. Again, all of us dito sometimes can be angry with God. Are you listening? Bakit kami nag-break, Lord? Kala ko ba, sabi mo siya na, nung pinag-pray ko, ko siya na, sabi ko, pag pumasok na, nakapula siya na, pumasok siya, nakapula eh, bakit kayo hindi na kami? Stop being angry with God. Because He knows. He knows. And He understands your pain. Are you with me? The Lord is here to comfort you. Kahit nawala yung tao, Either literally, namatay siya, or basta parang nawala na siya, wish mo namatay na siya. But listen carefully. God is here to comfort you. Now, the disciples, Martha and Mary, the Jews, they all showed yung struggle nila sa faith nila. But what is amazing about this? Jesus did not scold them. Hindi sila pinagalitan ni Jesus. Jesus did not say, kayo talaga, ang basasamaan nyo talaga. Instead, He performed the sixth sign, the miracle. Not to tell everybody na magka, may magkakasakit na kabaganak, mabubuhay na. It is to show us that Jesus alone is the light of the world and the hope of the world. Look at what happened here. 
So they took away the stone. Then Jesus, then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So the purpose of this sign ay hindi para sabihin sa atin, tuwing magkakasakit, tuwing meron mapupunta sa ospital, huwag ka magalala, bubuhayin ni Jesus siya. That is not the point. Amen? So baka mamaya pumunta kayo sa PGH para be healed, rise up! You know, so, tapos bilang mga tao, nagkamatayan lahat doon dahil sa'yo. No, no, that's not the point of the story. Sabi niya, that they may believe in me. Look at this, okay? When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus! No, sabi, dapat ba sabihin niya yung pangalan kasi dami na kalibing doon eh. Hindi natawa rin, ha? Okay. Ako natawa ako rin. Lazarus. Now, interestingly, sabi niya, come out, in, in the original Greek, what Jesus said is, Lazarus, this is the way out. Yun know, ang sinabi niya. In other words, si Lazarus, sa dilim nung kano na yun, and then, ito kayo nakadescribe, di ba? The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with straps of linen and a cloth around his face. Now, can you imagine this? I want you to think about it for a second. Nakarap siya, and he's doing like this. Okay? And sabi ni Jesus, Lazarus, this way out! Lazarus, this way out. May nakalagay exit, you know, follow the exit, okay? Come out. This is a funny thing. As I was imagining si Lazarus, siguro paglabas siya doon sa tune, di ba? Kita niya yung mga tao, nandun lahat sa labas. Parang, nakatunga ka sa kanya. Kaya parang, what? What? <laughs> Jesus said to them, take all the grave clothes and let him go. That ends the story. And here's the message. When you're experiencing a loss, Jesus is close. When you're experiencing a loss, Jesus is close. You may be here today. At nag-go through kayo ng grief or pain. Because somebody close to you, somebody dear to you, ay nawala. Maybe it's by then. Maybe a grandfather, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a nephew. Somebody na malapit na is taken away by then. And you're grieving. And you're asking God why. Maybe hindi naman namatay, kundi just somebody, just wala na, wala na sa buhay mo. Dati kayo, kasama kayo, but now, not anymore. Dati ka-close mo siya, pero ngayon hindi na. Maybe it's something, mahalaga sa'yo, but it was taken away. Maybe a job, a ministry. Or maybe hindi pa tinitake away, pero na-imagine mo na, it will be taken away. And you are suffering from all these struggles of faith na binanggit ko. Fear, denial, anger, suffering. Pag nag-go-go ka ng mga ganon, here's the Lord telling you today, I am close in your pain, in your suffering. I am here to comfort you. You see, when you're experiencing a loss, Jesus, Jesus, is close. Sa totoo lang, during times na nagsasuffer ka ng gusto, that's when the Lord can really manifest His presence in the life mo. You may question Him, pero please, understand. He loves you, He cares for you. At sa pagpasok ng Paskong ito, if ever you feel like parang hindi ka makarejoice, I want you to know that you can have joy in your world because Jesus is God's way of saying to you, I care for you. Would you stand up right now?